So when it comes to really maximizing student potential and catapulting them to a whole new level of success and performance, um, research is showing that one of the most important foundations of all of that comes from a student's mindset. And in particular, the most powerful mindsets are ones that are labeled as growth mindsets, meaning that a student believes that talent and potential are not things that one is born with, but are things that can be grown and developed over time. And what research is also pointing to is that one of the most effective and efficient ways to teach students how to adopt a growth mindset is to show them that the brain is malleable or plastic, meaning that it changes uh, with and grows with according to how we decide to use it. So uh, in my experience also with many, many students and in line with this research, I'm going to show you five key points to that you can teach to students to explain to them how this works, how the brain is malleable, um, and what's happening up there so that they can see that they have more control than they think they do. So the first point is that the first time um, any thought occurs in our mind, uh, I'm going to use really simple language, but it's like two cells in the brain called neurons talk to each other. So I'm going to use a very simple image, which is X's and dashes used to, to, to portray this, even though obviously it's not scientifically accurate, but it's a way to show students how this works. So the first time we have a thought, these cells uh, communicate or send an electrochemical pulse to each other, so they talk to each other. Now the second point is that the as soon as cells talk to each other the first time, there's a much greater chance that they're going to talk or send a signal to each other another time. It's kind of like, at this point, they know that each other exists, and so they can now communicate more easily. So point number two is that once we have a thought one time, it's much more likely that we could have that thought again. And so the pulses can happen more quickly and easily. The third really important point is that once uh, thoughts have occurred enough time in the brain, the brain actually considers this a high priority pathway. It is like it considers that since this thought is happening, it must be important according to that person's environment and therefore should be placed at a high priority position. And the way the brain does that is by coding a pathway with something called myelin, which is white fat, and that helps the signal go faster and faster. So it's almost like laying down a cable or high-speed internet or fiber optic cable between cells so that they can communicate very, very quickly. So once cells have talked enough times and sent that signal enough times, the brain will now coat the pathway in between these cells with this white fat. Um, it's where we start to see white matter in the brain. And the fourth really important point is that this is really important for learning, clearly. So this is what helps us walk, talk, learn a language, learn how to play an instrument or a sport. All of that is us getting the cells to talk to each other enough times that these pathways are created so that our brain doesn't have to use so much energy in, in trying to get these signals across to each other. It just starts to happen more automatically. So the saying that neuroscientists use is the cells that fire together wire together. So this is really important for learning. But point number four is that although this is very important for learning, this is also where a lot of our challenges happen because this is also where beliefs get formed. And so starting from when we are young, we are in environments that may lead us to have certain thoughts about ourselves. And because we're in the same environment with the same people, generally speaking, and it's only about five to ten people that we're around, we're getting similar environmental feedback constantly. And this will lead us to have similar thoughts over and over and over again about ourselves also. So because the brain will put any thought that's happening a lot as a high priority pathway, it does this also with beliefs. And this doesn't matter whether it's a negative or positive belief, if we're having it enough times, it will be considered a high priority pathway and the, the brain will code it with this myelin. So that means that when starting from when we're young, the messages that we're receiving from our environment will lead us to have certain pathways, which is how beliefs about anything get formed. Beliefs about intelligence, our talent, ourselves, our self-worth, all of that gets formed. So point, point number five, is that what's really important for students to know is just as the brain can coat certain pathways with myelin, it also will take away myelin when it sees that a 
a competing thought or cells in a different area of the brain are being activated a lot. So it will lower priority of a pathway when it's not being used as much. So any kind of self-belief that we have is negative. For example, if we want to uh, minimize that thought, we need to have other thoughts that activate other parts of the brain much more often and so that the brain will consider those higher priority and it will lower the priority of the other thoughts. And the only way to really do this is to do it on purpose um, because when we have pathways that are myelinated, we, that tends to be a default. So we need to learn that this is true so that we can intentionally start choosing thoughts that are growth oriented and expansive and allow us to dream big and set high goals for ourselves. So when students understand this process, they can learn that they need to make some of their self-talk and their self-beliefs lower priority, meaning they don't repeat it as often. And the best way to do that is to choose intentional thoughts about ourselves that are contrary to that, so that are positive and growth oriented, and have those thoughts and do that intentionally as often as possible in order for the brain to consider that new pathway a high priority so that it'll code it. And three great examples of how to do this. One is gratitude journals, one of the most powerful things students can do. Another is uh, visualization of things that they want to create and how they're, they want to succeed and how they want to feel. And another one is power thoughts or mantras or any type of uh, phrase that you can put up on the board or students can choose for themselves where you get them to repeat it and start the day with that and repeat those things as often as possible. So get that brain to start working on high priority pathways that feel good and allow students to succeed. And that is one idea of how to teach students about growth mindsets. Thanks.